Hey guys and welcome to another video. My name is Simon Archer. Today I'm going to be doing a video on how to add icons and splash screens to your Xcode Swift iPhone application project. It's a pretty straightforward thing to do, but I struggled the very first time I did it. I wasn't quite sure how you did it. There's a very specific way to do it and for me it was a little bit of, a, of an intuitive way to do it, at least what I thought. So I had to find a way online and I just thought maybe this video might help other people who also uh, don't quite know the exact way to add icons or to create a splash screen for your iPhone project. Okay, um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create an icon. If you have an icon already, cool. If you don't, you can use any image editor of your choice. I have a program called Pixelmator on my Mac here and you'll see that I created a very simple app icon. Uh, a couple of things you need to note. One, you need to obviously make it a square size. So this is a 1024 by 1024 size image, and it's recommended that you use at least 1024 by 1024, um, if not the exact dimension of 1024 by 1024. The reason being is that obviously you want to cater for different devices with different screen resolutions, and with 1024 by 1024, it's the largest size you need to cater for all the different devices and all the different uh, resolutions for your app icons. So once you have an image of 1024 by 1024, so now we can create an Xcode project. So I've created a very simple Xcode project. Literally, I just created a new one called My App Icon Demo. It's brand new, empty. Um, if you go to the map My App Icon Project name in the top here and click on My App Icon Targets and go to General and scroll down to App Icons and Launch Images at the bottom here. Make sure that your app icon source is on app icon. If it's not, just select it, make sure it's selected. Once you've selected that, go to your images assets folder on the left hand side here. Click on that and you'll see that you have an app icon um, asset collection over here. Tapping on it, you'll see a collection of empty placeholders currently. And on the right hand side here, on your sidebar, make sure it's open um, and make sure you're looking at the attributes inspector you'll see that there's a number of different sizes that you can select. So currently by default, it's selected iPhone for iOS 8 and upwards, iOS 7 and later, iPad, iOS 7 and later, and it's CarPlay, Apple Watch and Mac. Um, Apple Watch is a new one, so it's CarPlay relatively new. So if, you want, if you're targeting application to work across all these devices, you can select all of these different assets collections here and you'll see that as you select them new placeholders appear and as you deselect them they disappear so for the purpose of this demo i'm just going to target for iphone and ipad if you targeting just iphone it's, if you're making an iphone only project you don't need to select the ipad sizes and if you're creating an ipad only project uh, vice versa you don't need to select the iphone size so let me just select all of the iphone and ipad asset collections You'll see that an annoying thing with Xcode is that it seems to hide the placeholder behind the sidebar. So if I minimize the sidebar, you'll see that they're here, and they don't. You can't find like I can't scroll to see it. So I think it's it might be a bug with Xcode, but it's a little bit annoying that it happens. Um, just click out of the images assets folder and click back into it. Uh, doesn't work, uh, so you just need to kind of like play around with your screen size so you can see all of the empty asset uh, placeholders. So you'll see here that there's uh, a numerous amount of app icons that you need to create. All right. Um, unfortunately, it's not quite a one size fits all. If you have a one or two four by image, you can't just put into each of these little placeholders here and expect um, Xcode to do all the resizing for you. You actually need to do the resizing yourself. Luckily, there are programs out there that makes this job a whole lot easier for you. So I have a program on my Mac called Icon Kits, and you can buy this on the Mac App Store. It's not a lot. It's relatively cheap, really. Like I don't buy apps often, but I thought this would be worthwhile, um, especially if you're going to be doing a couple of projects. Um, you know, it just takes a lot of the hassle out of creating app icons for Xcode. Um, but if you don't want to spend any money right now, if you just kind of like want to do a one-time thing, there are websites out there that also do the same thing without paying them. So there's a website called makeappicon.com. 
and it's the same type of concept. You give it an image and then it produces a whole bunch of different app icon sizes. Uh, and so let's just try this out here. So icon kit, if it's simple as either importing an image from your desktop or from wherever it is, so I'm going to import my app icon image that I've made and it produces a preview of the icon. Boom, cool. Once I'm happy with that, I click on next and then it produces all the different app icon sizes I need and I can export this to my desktop. Let's see how this website works. So click this button to upload. I select my app icon image. It puts it into the toaster. Very cute, it's baking, so just wait a second. So obviously this is all online now, so it's a lot more processing, a lot more waiting to, to do this. Um, but again, it's free, so it might be worth the wait. Cool, success. So now you'll see that it's produced the same thing, all the different app icon sizes, and it shows you a preview on the iPhone itself, which is quite nice. You can also select for Android and for iOS. So the kind of catch here is that you need to enter your email. Okay, there's an ad that pops up. No, thank you. You need to enter your email to subscribe to their newsletter and download your app icons. I don't like giving my email address to just any sites on the internet, so I chose to buy the application and just kind of like, you know, not worry about being sent spam by these people or not. So this is a free option. Um, you will be subscribed to the newsletter, but you can unsubscribe and everything. But this is an option for you. So let me just go back to my icon kit three. So once I have it, I export it into a folder of my choice and I export it here. Once you've done that, you can close icon kit. And if you go to your folder, you'll see now that you have two folders, one for iOS 6 and one for iOS 7 plus. And within each folder, there's a bunch of icons. So it literally did all the work for you, did all the resizing for you. It's also named the files in quite a nice intuitive manner so you can quickly know which file is which and which size is which. So something which I assumed this is how you do it is that I was used to, if I want to add an image into my project, I would take the image, drag it to my Xcode project image asset folder. And then once I have my icon there, I can just then drag the image into the placeholder, but it doesn't work. Um, it doesn't allow me to, and I was, wasn't quite sure why. It turns out that's not the way that Apple wants you to do it. So you can just delete that file from your image assets. And the way to do it is you click on your app icon, see all your placeholders here. Now you literally have to just drag and drop. It's pretty straightforward, but I didn't quite know that at first. So you'll see that, for instance, the top row here, we have iPhone, um, and it's this image size you want is 29 points. So you'll see that Icon Kit has renamed all our images, images for us, and we can just look for the 29 points image file. Uh, what I find is easy to do sometimes is to actually click on the image, and Finder will show you the dimensions on the image over here. So I'm looking for 29 points. Scroll, 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 there we go. So icon-small is of dimensions 29 by 29. So I just drag that guy into there, boom. You need to be careful because it will allow you to drag an image icon of the wrong size into the, the placeholder image and it will throw an error, like I've got an error message over here. If I click on the error message, it tells me that my app icon PNG is 180 but should be 58 by 58. So it will allow you to, to put the wrong image into the placeholder. So you just make sure you've got to put the right image in. So now we have our icon dash small of 29 by 29 that went over there. We now want the same one but two times. So we can just come here and go icon of small times two and just drag it into there. You'll see that the warning message should disappear and then three times by three times. All right, so the next one is 40 points. So we look here, okay, here's a 40 points. Cool, just drag and drop that guy into there. 
Um, there's an error warning here. Let's look at it. Didn't like that for some reason. It's 40 by 40 and should be 80 by 80. Oh, that is right because this is two times 40. So that's the problem here. So we don't need the 40. We were looking for the two times 40. So we drag that into there. The warning should go away. And then we drag the three times into there. So this is the hardest part is just mixing and matching um, and finding the right icons into the right placeholders. So I'm just going to finish off the rest really quickly now. Cool, so now we've added the icons to all of our different placeholders and we have no warning error messages. So everything is good to go. If we run this now um, in our simulator, you'll see that our icon should appear on the simulator home screen. Cool, there you go. You see our app icon on the iPhone 6 Plus. Um, so let's click on this and you'll see that we still have that ugly splash screen and we're going to just show you how to make that into something a little bit nicer for our project. So we have the icon, we want to add a nice splash screen. Cool, so let's just, let's go to our project file over here, scroll down and as we were with app icons and launch images, for launch screen file, we want to select launch screen dot nib or zib, whatever you want to call it. And you'll see that it creates a launch screen.nib file on the left hand side here. And this is, you'll see that it says my app icon demo and it's the same splash screen you see when you launch the, the application, there you go. Cool, so Xcode makes this very simple for you now. So let's just go and design our splash screen. So we select our nib file, or open up the side menu over here and because it's a square size, it's a little bit odd to envision what we're doing. I'm just going to change the size from freeform to iPhone 5.5 inch. Cool, just to give you a better idea of what it is we're actually working with here. So now we can actually edit this screen. This is very much like a storyboard. We can drag and drop labels and images on here. So let's just delete this label, delete this label here. I want to add a new label to my splash screen. Put it here, I want to call it my cool app. Okay, let me just kind of center it. Let me just extend it to the edges here. And this is where you need to use auto layouts. If you're not familiar with auto layouts, um, basically because we have different size screens nowadays, we have the iPhone 4 inch, the 4.7, the 5.5 inch, and iPads. What Xcode does is that we have a canvas, uh, which kind of like, again, like a one size fits all but you need to add constraints to your different assets on your canvas so they align and stretch and center accordingly on no matter what device screen you're looking at, no matter what resolution. So that's all the layouts. There's a bit of a, it takes a bit of a learning, um, a little bit of a trick getting it right, but once you get the hang of it, it kind of makes a little bit of sense. So because we want our My cool App label here to be centered, I'm dragging it to the edges of the screen. I'm gonna add a constraint to go to the leading space and the trading space, so it's edge, so it's edge to edge. All right, I'm then going to center this, and I need to position it on the y-axis. So I'm just going to right-click and drag to the super view and go top space to container. So I'm going to align it to the top space based on um, what I'm seeing right now. And let me just increase the size here. Uh, let's just make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it nice and large. Cool. Command equals. You'll see that it's out of a line again. So if you see a little orange um, dashes, it means that the constraints are off now because the resizes so things a little bit. It's it's not um, it's changed. So I'm, I can select the label here. I can click over here and go update constraints. Uh, it's still off center, so I'm going to put it back centered and I'm going to update constraints again. Cool. So now I'm going to add an image to our splash screen. Why not? Let's put an image view inside here. Uh, let's put it in the center. 
and let me for my image I'm gonna throw in my hug life picture uh, let's add it to all right sorry let's open up the image assets folder drag my hug into there open up the launch screen nib file click on the image view and for the image property I'm gonna choose my hug life there you go Cool, he's pretty badass. Let's make him bigger. Uh, let's see. Let's put him right there, front and center, because he's badass like that. And I'm going to add a constraint to the view. I want him center horizontal, center vertically, uh, trailing. Leading bottom should be good. Cool. Uh, we can also now nah, should be good. You can you can be creative with this nib file with the storyboard for your launch screen. You can add a background color. You can add a whole bunch of different stuff. But let's just see how it looks and whether we have our own custom launch screen. So I'm going to run the simulator and there you go. We had a badass launch screen. So if I go back to the home screen, we have our app icon. Click on the app icon, we'll show our goes so fast. Uh, uh, let's just try at home. Command shift. Okay, let's just quit this <clears throat> and launch it again. Uh, crash submitted because I quit the, the application. Uh, let's launch it again and we should see our splash screen. Cool. So that is how you create an, an app icon and that's how you create a splash screen for your Xcode project. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's very easy. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a very straightforward and easy uh, thing to do to add app icons to your Xcode project and to add a custom splash screen. If you like the video, please like it. If you have any comments or questions, please post them below. If you want to subscribe, please feel free to do so too. And otherwise, until next time, cheers.